Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be on domain aggregates. Now, domain aggregates are a very powerful and simple way to go and retrieve one piece of information from a table or from a query. So if you haven't already seen the, the series on SQL and doing uh, select queries and that sort of thing, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video series now because it's going to make a lot more sense as I'm going through domain aggregates uh, in this video. So again, if you haven't seen that video series, go stop, watch it now. For those of you who have seen those video series, let's go ahead and talk about domain aggregates. So I've got a form here this form main and I've got a single text box on it and in this text box I want to go and let's say that uh, I want to put in for example the name of the uh, the client or the, the the company that is going to be using this application okay and I know that they are going to be the first record that I have here in my table one customers and they're going to have the ID of one. So that would be Metro property. So let's just assume that I know this, that I know that the uh, when I'm building this, I'm building it for somebody, and I know that I've got this record in this table and I plan on showing it in here. Now, if somewhere down the line, we wanna change the name, all I have to do is come into here and it will automatically change it on the main form and I don't have to worry about it, right? So that's kind of a useful thing for us to have just a single piece of information coming from my table one customers and I want to display it on this form and nothing more. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my text box and I'm going to go to the control source and I'm going to go into the ellipsis here and here's the expression builder. I'm going to drill down to the built-in functions under the functions uh, section here and under expression categories we've got domain aggregate. Okay, And you'll notice that there are some expression these these functions that are in here like d average d count d first last lookup max min and sum these should all look somewhat familiar except for d lookup which we'll go over in just a minute but if i dropped the d in front of them and just said average count first last max min sum you might recognize those again from the sql series that we did when we were talking about using aggregate functions in a query to essentially run a calculation on a column. So if we wanted to find the average of a column in a query, then we could use the average function in order, in order to do that. We could do the same thing with first, count, last, max, min, sum, etc. Well, essentially, that's what you're able to do with domain aggregates, except you don't have to go and build out the entire query and try to do the whole thing that way. It's a very simplified way to run a query to just go get that one piece of information. Now, before we actually talk about aggregating the data, let's actually talk about the DLOOKUP. Because what DLOOKUP does is actually goes and grabs that one piece of information from a table. It doesn't do any calculations on it, like average, count, first, last, min, max, and some do. Instead, it just flatly gives us that one field from that one column, from that one row, from that one table. Okay, that's essentially what DLOOKUP is going to do. So in our particular case, the example that I gave, we have the table one customers table where I've, I know the specific table, I know the specific column, and I know my specific ID value that I want to grab from. So if we were to express this in a SQL query, we would say select customer name from table one customers where ID equals one. And that would be how we would come to Metro properties being displayed in our query. Well, essentially with the D function, the D lookup function, that's exactly what you're going to be doing with it. So let's go ahead and put D lookup in here. Expression is the name of the field or the name of the column that we want to pull from. So in table one customers, it was, and I'm going to put in quotation marks here, customer name. Okay. Then for domain, you're going to specify either the table or the query that you're going to pull the information from. So for domain in this particular case, it's going to be in, again, in quotation marks, table one customers. Okay, because that's the table we're going to grab from. 
Now, the criteria is essentially our where clause that we would have had in our, uh, in our, our aggregate query, our group by query that we were talking about before. Again, in quotation marks, I don't need my where clause, but I'm just going to think of what I would put in my where clause. I'm just going to drop the where. So that would be ID equals one. So essentially, you can think of this as select customer name from table one customers where ID equals one. And that is how you use the DLOOKUP function. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and click OK there. Let's go ahead and view our, our form. And sure enough, there's Metro Properties shows up in our text box. So we were able to go and grab this one piece of information from our Table 1 customers table, and we were able to display this in our form. Now here's the cautionary tale that I need to tell you about. I run into this all the time, and it is very, very frustrating for whoever is using this particular database. You can imagine the ease and the power that you get from being able to do the DLOOKUP that you might be tempted to put to use DLOOKUP for all of the fields on your form for your, you know, let's say we had 20 text boxes on here, like this was a customer form and I wanted to show customer information. Well, the problem is, is that each one of these D functions, these D lookups that you would be running is going to be running its own independent query in the ACE engine. And as such, that means if I have 20 text boxes that are all showing 20 different pieces of information, they're all trying to run simultaneously. That is a lot of queries. That's 20 queries that are all trying to run at one time to display the information to your user. And every time that they click on the next button or whatnot, that's another 20 queries that are all going to be running again at the same time. You can see how this is going to make your form or your report take a long time to load. Okay, so the best method and at the enterprise level when you're dealing with a lot of data and you're trying to think about something for a business you really should be avoiding using these domain aggregates unless you really are just going to be putting on this one form one maybe two pieces of information but really no more than that if you're going to use more than two text boxes on your form and you want to pull data from your tables or your queries you should be doing that as a record set not as a D lookup. Okay, now, so enough about the cautionary stuff. Uh, D lookup is also usable. If I just, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go ahead and delete it out of here. I can also use, oh, I thought I took it out of there. I guess I didn't. Okay, there we go. So it's cleared out. I can also use this in my uh, events in VBA. So I can just do something like this on load. I'll just do me.tx, oops, text one uh, value equals, and I'll just put in my D lookup. Okay, save that. Let's go ahead and close that. Open my form, and there you go. So I can use that D lookup function either directly in the expression builder and put it right into the text box or I can even use it in the actual VBA code in the background. Uh, and it's really up to you whichever one you want to do. I generally prefer, like, I, I like to do everything in code if I can, uh, just because it makes it nice and simple to go find it. Uh, but really, this is a, a preference. It's up to you whether or not you want to do that. Okay, so there you go. There's the D lookup function. You could also do something like, uh, if I wanted to specify, instead of a table, I wanted to go into a query. So let's say my query was, let's say I want to do where the first name is Steve and and the phone type is cell, okay? So first name is Steve, phone type is cell, and I'm going to get it from this query. So let's go ahead and go into our, uh, let me go into the query, into the events here. Okay, so I'm going to do a DLOOKUP, and I'm going to say where first name, okay, and my table is not a table, it's going to be a query, right? It's going to be the query contact phones. So query contact phones, 
And in our where clause, we were saying where the first name is equal to Steve. So first name is equal to, now this is a bit tricky here. Remember, we're going to use the apostrophe when we have to use something, when we need to specify quotes inside of quotes, you can use apostrophes to specify that instead. So we're going to say where uh, first name is equal to Steve. And remember, this is just like my where clause. So and phone type is equal to cell. Okay, so again, we're going to do a D lookup to get the first name. Actually, I want to get the phone number, don't I? That would probably be a better example, right? The phone number. Okay, so let's get the phone number. Phone number. There we go. From our query contact phones query, where the first name is Steve and the phone type is cell. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and load our form. And there's our phone number. So let's look at the query just to make sure. Yep, first name is Steve. And it's the phone type is a cell phone. And that's how we get that in there. So we can run that select query, essentially, as a D lookup to get just that one piece of information. And you can, again, use that on either a table or a query like I've done in here. OK, so that's the D lookup function. What about all those other ones like D sum, right? D sum or D count or D min okay well essentially it's all exactly the same let's do a d count um, where first name is steve okay so let's do it that way so we've got a d count we're going to count how many rows we're just counting phone numbers it doesn't really matter which one we count really does it but we're going to say in the query contact phones we're going to count how many times the first name is steve in a record here Let's go ahead and save that and view it. And we have two records in our query contact phones where the first name is Steve. Okay. And then we could say something like, let's say, how many customers do we have that are active? Right. Let's do that. Okay. This is going to be our final example on this. Let's do, uh, it's still going to be a D, D count. We're going to do. I'm just going to switch back and forth here between my two views. So I need to do a D count of, let's say, customer name. D count of customer name from table one contacts. Oh, no, customers. There we go. Table one customers. That's right. Where? active equals true okay so we could do d count uh d count customer name from table one customers where active is equal to true that's going to give us a count of how many customers we have that are currently active and if we save that let's go ahead and close that and then run our form and view it we have four active customers there's one oops one two, three, and four. So that was correct. So there you go. That is how you can use a domain aggregate. And I guess just for posterity, I'll go ahead and just uh, take this, go to the onload. I'm going to copy this. And we'll just go ahead and delete this. And you can see, if I go into the data, the control source, and I just paste that in there instead and click OK, you'll see it works exactly the same, except to put it all the way at the end there. So just part of the format. So there you go. That is how you can use domain aggregates, especially the D lookup and all of your D count, D min, D av, all that good stuff. So there you go. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to post your questions down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. And uh, until then, I'll talk to you guys later.